Hey there, welcome to the workshop recorder. My name is Scott. I'm going to show you part two of this little submarine build. This is the K class that I've been working on and uh, it's about ready for paint. I wanted to show you all the things I've done uh, to add to the to the submarine since I've last shown you this uh, this build. So we've gone ahead and I, I was going to replace all the I was going to replace all the uh, masts and and things with telescoping brass tubing but I discovered I don't have enough uh, I don't have enough fine stuff on hand and so I just very carefully cleaned up the kit parts these two masts are are kit parts the uh, but I've added the photo etch parts I added a, a flag mast here and we're ready for paint now I wanted to show you what I meant earlier in my other video if you'll notice this forward mast here is offset and all the models I've seen uh, have put them in the center line right there, and understandably so. I mean, it's, you'd think it'd be on the center line. But as I was thinking about this, why would that be offset? Well, there's your key right there. That's a torpedo hatch. And a torpedo hatch is going to be angled into the torpedo room. And when you raise the little crane up and you start loading torpedoes, if you've got a big iron mast in the way, you're not going to be able to load any torpedoes. And so... Um, that's why that is offset so that you can load torpedoes in there um, also this mast over here is offset and so they they do form kind of a starboard line there but overall I'm pleased with the kit I've got the photo etch parts in place now and um, I've got my ladder there my uh, various uh, watertight doors and we're ready for paint so what I'm gonna do I've already primed it once with black uh, that was to check my seams um, I had some trouble up here and some trouble back here, so I had to I had to do some sanding and filling. But I'm going to prime it again and get some primer on. So that's what we're going to do: get primer on. And then I'm going to use this uh, MRP number 40 dark gray. This is a color used for MiG-21s and MiG-29s and various uh, U.S. jets. Good uh, all-purpose uh, dark gray. It's actually about a 65 to 70 percent gray. It's pretty neutral. That's going to be my whole color. Uh, the superstructure in the top of the hull, I'm going to do a light gray. I'm going to use MRP 38 at first. I think it's going to be too dark and a little too blue for my liking. Um, but I'm going to try this, and if I need to come back over it with some, some lightening agents, I'll use some white, and then when I, when I do my oil weathering, I'll use some, some lighter colors there. Uh, also, a lot of times you see in some of the builds that folks have done of these subs, uh, they just do the whole superstructure uh, and the, the whole gray. Uh, what I've discovered is that these funnels are off colored, they're dark, and the deck, the top of the deck, the top of this rear deck, and this little trailing edge here are often uh, black. And so I'll, I'm gonna leave those in black, uh, or paint them black. Uh, and uh, well, obviously in, in this scale, and in virtually in any scale, I don't like to use a, a, a true black I think it's too dark for scale models. I like to use like a 90 to 95 percent black, and I find that this Tamiya, not Tamiya, this uh, Mr. Paint tire rubber. Uh, I don't have the bottle handy. Uh, the rubber for tires is a good color. RLM 66 will give you a good a good black also for a for a small model. Um, I generally don't believe in scale effect too much, but when it comes to blacks and to values of, of blacks. Um, I like to I like to lighten them up just a little bit. That's just my personal preference. I think it looks better. Uh, plus, you can you can weather on top of it a little bit better, darken it up that way. Uh, RLM 66 is usually a little bit too light if I'm trying to replicate a black, but occasionally I'll use it for tires or things like that that uh, that fade. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start painting this, and uh, I'll show you the process as I go. So let's get to painting. So what I'm going to do is first remove all the dust off the model. It's always frustrating to paint and find that you've got a bunch of dust in your paint. So I use a, a soft brush for that. Next I'm going to prime. I'm going to prime all the parts with Mr. Surfacer. I find it gives a nice velvety smooth finish to begin your painting. And you should always prime your models. It's just good, good practice. Lower hull I'm going to use this MRP Dark Gray. It's a, it's a good... Um, Good neutral gray I like this this is a good color I'll probably use it for a lot of other purposes as well it's very close to neutral gray you find for US aircraft of World War II but um, it's slightly darker so uh, I think it works so what I'm doing here is putting on a, a streaky kind of up and down model coat to represent uh, it, it's not marbling per se but it's kind of got that stripiness 
and this breaks up the surface and gives you a little bit of interest and looks like it's uh, you know a little worn so you get that nice effect of pre-weathering and gives your model something better than just a, a solid coat so there you can see what it looks like there What I'm doing now is masking the hull with uh, some fresh lines. Never trust the edge of a tape roll. Always cut a true straight line and you'll have better results. And what I'm doing next is I'm going to lift the tape off the table and I'm going to tape it back down several times and that'll make even a low tack tape uh, less tacky and you'll have less risk of peeling up paint. Even though we're primed you've always got that risk and so I'm going to do that several times here. Okay as we mask this uh the hull color from the upper structure. It's going to be real tempting to follow these lines here. And you'll notice that this hull is curved quite a bit and uh, it's kind of deceptive. The ship would sit in the water and the water line would not follow these curved, these lines. If you went and masked along here, it'd be real tempting to do that. But if you look at pictures, the dark gray hull color starts about right here above this uh, torpedo tube. And as it comes closer to the middle of the hull, it's way up here. And as it goes back to the rear portion of the hull, it actually is above this, slightly above this, uh, this uh, dive plane. So it is a water line we're trying to get and water is level. And so what I'm doing is I'm using my dividers. This is a good, a good tool for transferring measurements. And so I'm, I'm keying off of what I know on my photo there that the boot line comes in just under that anchor well. So here on my ship, on my boat, it's just under the anchor well you can see there. And so I'm going to take that measurement from the flat surface that the keel is resting on. And so that that boat is level with respect to the surface it's on which represents, you know, it would be like in the water. And so as I go down this, I can make sure that my mask stays at the same level along the hull by just resting my dividers on the surface there. But you see we've retained we've retained the level pretty much all along the hull uh, to a, a nice degree of accuracy. And so we'll do this on this side and the other side and then I'm going to fill in the portion the bottom part of the hull with uh, masking tape and we'll continue to paint. You'll notice on the upper hull with the light gray, I used the same technique as I did on the lower hull. I um, just did it with a lighter gray. Over the dark black, I went in with a uh, streaky up and down vertical streak uh, undercoat, leaving a little bit of uh, the black showing through here and there. And this gives it a more, um, a more interesting look, you know. Again, it's not a solid big blank wall of featureless paint. You've actually got some variation in tone there that suggests maybe water running off the deck, maybe some corrosion, um, but I think it's a nice effect. Also on the top, uh, you'll see in the fast motion section coming up, I did a lot of uh, marbling on the upper surface, and this gives a nice effect uh, under your final coat of paint, and you're ready for weathering, so there we go. So now we can unmask this thing, and I think the colors are working pretty well for what I like. Um, I think that's going to work. Let's see here. Yeah, that's going to work. It's always nice to pull a mask off, isn't it? And when you use this low-tack tape, you don't have to worry too much about peeling your paint up if you've put primer down because the primer helps the paint really bite to the surface of the of the boat. If I had not primed this, I'd be I'd be peeling paint up all over the place. But with primer, I can just go along there and peel off my nice crisp line there. And that's real satisfying. Alright, we're all masked up here and ready to paint. And all I'm going for is the top surfaces of the superstructure and the periscope masts. That's all that's going to be black. Now, like I said before, I'm using 
this tire rubber mat by MRP. I find this to be a good um, a good black for smaller scales. I don't like super black. I'll actually use a true black in um, in these gaps right here, where the uh, steam stacks would retract into it. Actually, that's supposed to be an open part of the superstructure. You're supposed to be able to look down in there. In fact, the other version of this kit that Micromere gives you apparently has that as an open part because you get a little trunk that goes inside a photo etch part to uh, wall off that little well there. We'll see. I'm going to build that one too. But uh, yeah, let's get painting. I'm going to move to my chrome because it gives me a little more control and a really fine line and I just want to get the paint just in there where I need it. I don't want to make a big mess. Um, my Evolution has a, a larger nozzle and you could see when I was painting this that uh, I'd get a lot of overspray if I tried to get in there real fine. I don't have to go real heavy with this because I've already got black primer on there. So I just need enough to give a, a, a nice solid color up here, get rid of my overspray from my gray. All right, well that ought to do it for the main deck here. These steam stacks are going to be painted, or they're going to be weathered, I should say, to be a little bit different color. Because they were always, you know, they were heated, belching oil smoke. They'd be pretty sooty on the inside, and there'd be a good amount of soot gathered around on the outside as well, plus some heat staining, heat damage. By the way, here's a tip if you have one of these chrome um, airbrushes. You'll notice if you have one that the tip of the needle, I don't think you can see it on the, on the video, but the tip of the needle sticks out and is vulnerable to being broken because these two flow directors don't really add any protection to the airbrush. So, I don't know if you can see it in there, but what I like to do when I'm not using the airbrush is I unscrew this a little bit and I just back that needle out a little bit. Just enough where it's not sticking out anymore. And that way I can store it and I don't have to worry about anything breaking that needle. Alright, I want to tell you what I've done so far. I have uh, put an oil wash on this submarine. And because of the harsh light, you can't really see it well, so I'm going to have to take some pictures for you. Um, but I've done a little bit of rust streaking. Uh, this was a, look, looking at pictures, this was a fairly grungy boat. I've put the decals on the conning tower and on the hull. And I've done a little bit of staining across the entire surface with uh, my oil paints. Now, I'm not going to go through how I actually did that. Um, that's a, that's a, a whole video in itself. But I want to tell you about the colors that I use for my, um, for my staining and for my oil washes. Uh, I only use, let me get them for you here. I only use two or three, maybe four colors max when I do oil washes. And this is on both aircraft and armor. And unless I need an, a, a, a peculiar, peculiar color, I use permanent white. I use Payne's Gray, which is a very cool gray, not very powerful. I use Ultramarine Blue, which is a very powerful blue. And I use Burnt Sienna, which is a very powerful uh, brown, which functions as a red. And so by combining these two, Burnt Sienna and um, Ultramarine Blue, you can get a very strong dark black, almost black. Uh, yet it still can carry some color and you can shift it to the red side or you can shift it to the cool side on the blue end and uh, That gives you a nice uh, a, a lot of versatility there And so I also used Payne's gray because I've got a light surface here And I don't want to stain it with my ultramarine or ultramarine blue as much So when I needed just some darkness and some staining and some foot grunge and oil grunge from you know say the crew's feet um, I would use this Payne's gray combined with white and that would give me a nice, uh, you know, some nice speckling and some grunginess. So that, that's what I did. I used um, these oil paints with mineral spirits directly on top of my MRP paint finish. I also decaled. Uh, these decals looked a little sketchy to me. I didn't know how well they would perform, so I used one of the spare ones on a, on a test mule, and it, it worked fine. 
I did have to work them down into the seams, the uh, the depth, the hull lines, and the the hull figures that go up and down the hull, uh, indicating the depth of the ship and its trim. I had to work those into the seam lines a little bit, but other than that, they responded well to solve a set. Now, what I do have to do on this particular model is they give you a decal here for the conning tower. Let me point that out here. This decal for the conning tower right there includes windows that were in there and they've they've tried to replicate the plexiglass that was in there with a screen uh, gradient and when you get a screen gradient that's a millimeter and a half wide by two and a half millimeters tall you're only going to have like 10 dots in there max and it doesn't look good you've got a white dot and a black dot basically in there and so what i'm going to do is go in very carefully with a brush and i'm going to fill in those squares with black paint and uh, that will give me, I think, a better look. I don't like when you try to replicate a window with a decal. I'd rather it just be a black, uh, a black square. Uh, so that's probably the last thing I'm gonna do. And yeah, well, there we go. So that's it on this K4, this K-Class submarine. Um, I'll put some pictures up on my Instagram account of the final product. And I appreciate you joining me. That's a, that's a pretty nice little kit. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. And I do intend to get the other version with the Flamingo bow. Micromere makes another version and I'm gonna compare those two and see how they look. And I might even do a waterline uh, kit, a, a waterline version of it. I don't know, we'll see. Thanks for joining me on the Workshop Recorder. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. That encourages me to make more videos. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know where I could do better or what I've done wrong. And um, I don't mind the feedback. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Have a good day.